Hello there, my name is Subir and I lead the cloud messaging team at Google. Today I'm going to talk about some of the awesome APIs that Google Cloud Messaging or GCM provides. GCM provides a rich set of APIs to send messages from a server to an application efficiently and reliably. I want to thank all the developers using Google Cloud Messaging because it really helps the ecosystem by minimizing the impact your application has on battery life, radio wakeups, and network signaling. Let's quickly look at some of the APIs required to use GCM. To use GCM, an application needs a registration ID. Use this registration ID to send messages to a particular device. Multicast lets you send messages to up to 1,000 recipients with a single request. And you can set time to live on each request to tell GCM when to expire the message. So what's new in 2014? Today I'll cover three key features that GCM provides. XMPP-based cloud connection server, upstream messaging, and user notifications. In 2013, we opened these APIs to a limited set of developers. Since then, we've added a bunch of new features with these APIs and made them faster and more robust. We saw a tremendous response and interest from developers around these APIs, and I'm really excited to announce that these services are now open for all developers. Let's talk about GCM's XMPP endpoint, also known as Cloud Connection Server. Cloud Connection Server, or CCS, provides a persistent, asynchronous, bi-directional connection to, your GCM, uh, to our GCM servers. This is a very powerful service, as it provides a virtual connection between your server and your user's GCM-connected devices. This connection can be used to reliably send and receive messages. Here's how you can connect to CCS. I'm using a simple XMPP library in Python to connect to CCS. As you can see, gcm.googleapis.com is the URL, and 5235 is the port. You simply need to connect to this endpoint and authenticate using your project's API key. Next step is to start sending messages. These messages include a JSON payload that contains a target, application data, and a message ID. Since sending via XMPP is asynchronous, this ID uniquely identifies an XMPP connection. So when CCS sends an act back to your server, it will use this message ID to identify the message. Therefore, it is important that this message ID is not only unique, but also present in the request. Let's take a look at what an ACK or an ACK for this message looks like. Message type would indicate an ACK or an ACK. In case of an ACK, there is an error code to describe what went wrong. So when you're implementing a CCS connection, here is what you need to know. We allow a maximum of 100 connections per sender, and the maximum outstanding messages per connection is also 100. Our improved error handling lets you know more precisely what went wrong. Here's an example of a control message describing that a connection is draining. What this message means is that the sender should not send any more messages on this connection. Any new messages on this connection will get back a NAC with an error code indicating that the connection is draining. We have also added new codes for other types of errors like JSON parsing, etc. So what we learned so far is that with XMPP endpoint, GCM provides the ability to have a persistent bi-directional connection to your servers. We also saw how to send messages down to a device using this connection. Next, we will take a look at our awesome upstream messaging API that lets you send messages from the application on a device to your server. We have made a lot of changes to make upstream messaging fast and reliable, and I'm happy to say that it's now open to all developers. So let's take a look. Since the connection between the device and GCM already exists, it's a low latency send as no new handshake is needed. These messages are saved locally if the device is offline and are sent when we have a connection. We use the same reliable message queue technology that we use for downstream messages. So if we lose a connection to your server, we will deliver the messages once the connection is reestablished. We will delete your messages once we get an ACK from your server. In order to receive an upstream message, your server should be connected to CCS. Here's an example on how to send an upstream message using Google Cloud Messaging APIs. Just set the project ID as a destination and we will deliver the message to your server. You can send, also set time to live in the API call. This is what an ACK looks like. Once again, since the response is asynchronous, message ID is used to identify the message. Here are some things to keep in mind when using upstream messaging. No pending messages on a connection more than 100. We will delete your upstream messages if your server fails to connect for more than 24 hours. 
we will also allow a maximum of 20 unact upstream messages from a single device, so acking is required. And similar to downstream messages, the maximum payload size allowed for upstream is 4K. Okay, here is one of my favorite new APIs in GCM, delivery receipts. When sending messages to a device, a common request from developers is to get more insight into the state of the message and to know if the message was delivered. For example, you are writing a messaging app and would like to show your sender if their message was delivered. With CCS, you can do that now. We are adding this new feature called delivery receipts. Here is an example on how you can request a receipt for a message. In the JSON payload of the message, you just set the new field delivery receipt requested to true. By default, the value is false. Here is a receipt message. This message will have a new message ID. From will be set to gcm.googleapis.com and type as receipt. There are four fields that we add in the response data. Message status, original message ID, time of send, and the registration ID of the original message. Nowadays, users have multiple devices and hence receive notifications multiple times. This can reduce notifications from a useful feature to an annoyance. Thankfully, GCM provides a convenient way called user notifications to reach all devices for a user and help you synchronize notifications, including dismissals. I'll talk more about dismissals in a bit. With user notifications, you can target all devices belonging to a user with a single request. This is a very powerful API and allows you to be smarter about your notifications. I'll give you a couple of examples. You can set a short TTL, so the notification will only be sent to a device that is currently connected. Another example is to use option of delay while idle. Imagine your user has a phone that they use all day and a tablet that sits idle at home. By setting the delay while idle and a TTL, you can send the notification only to the phone that is actively used. Pretty useful, right? To send messages to all devices for a user, you need a notification key. The application server can get a key by adding or removing registration to the notification key name. Let's see how you can get a notification key. Here is the endpoint to get a key and the HTTP header. The request is authenticated using your project's API key. So first time you add a registration to a notification key, you can do a create. And then if a user installs the app on another device, you can use an add. An important field is the notification key name. For us, it's just a unique identifier that you use to identify this user. The actual username is not relevant, so please use a hash. It needs to be unique for a user. Here's an example on how you can send a message to all devices for a user. The only difference is that instead of sending a message to a registration ID, we now send it to a notification key. Now let's assume a user on one device acts on the notification, and we want to dismiss this from all other devices. How do we do it? With upstream messaging, we can send a message to a notification key, and GCM will deliver the message to all other registrations in this key. This way, you can tell other devices to dismiss a notification as it is already handled on one device. In addition, you can also send this message to your application server by sending it to a project ID in a separate upstream message. Here's an example. As you can see, the two field in the upstream message is set to a notification key. This will make GCM send this message to all other devices that are part of this key. User notifications is available on both HTTP and XMPP. It allows a max of 20 registrations per notification key. And of course, the key name in the request should be unique to a user. Before we end, I'd like you to please check out our updated documentation for all GCM APIs and services. As always, it's available at this link here. Thank you for watching, and I hope you are excited to use these new APIs and services and enjoyed this video.